guys, Jason here again, and this tutorial, uh, this is the second tutorial we're making, so if you haven't uh, gone through the Getting Started Guide for the visual editing uh, Big Box custom themes, please watch that video, uh, which should be up further in the playlist here, and because uh, uh, that's going to give you a Getting Started Guide as far as how to get working in Visual Studio to work on your themes. But today's tutorial, what we're going to do is show you how to add an image to a view uh, and then also how to work with animated GIFs because uh, that has been uh, a commonly requested thing here as of late. So let's get started. So what view should we work on first here? Um, I'm thinking uh, just to keep things simple for now, I'm going to open up the keyboard view. Um, obviously, this doesn't make a whole lot of sense, but that's okay. This is just a tutorial here. And this is the keyboard view that you have up top. Um, and obviously you don't have any of the letters on the keys or anything, but you can see that the keys are all there. Uh, this is the on-screen keyboard. Uh, and we're just going to add a, an animated GIF to this. Um, actually, first off, we're just going to start with a regular image. Uh, so let's do that here first. Uh, so to add an image, it's relatively easy. Um, in our grid, just to give you a quick overview on how these grids work, you start with the grid. If you select the grid, you, you see the entire grid up here. And then you have something called grid.row definitions, which define all the different rows and their sizes. And these are all relative. And, but you'll notice that the, with the asterisk here makes, makes them be relative to, to each other instead of a specific pixel value or a specific uh, uh, size value. It's relative, uh, which means that it will space them out across the entire grid, ultimately. But because these are all the same number that means they're all going to be the same size now rows are these rows here uh, so they go horizontally columns go vertically so here we have obviously we have a lot more columns than we have rows and that's why there's more columns down here than rows so you have your grid and then you have your row definitions and then you have your column definitions that's how grids work, and they define the how many rows there are you have and how many columns you have, and they uh, will um, let you adjust the sizes of them and all that stuff. Now, of course, you can adjust this stuff visually up in the up in the visual editor up here. So if we want to go nuts, we can make that column extra big, and you'll you'll notice what it does here is it makes it changes the sizes of these. We have one that's seven and one that's seventy one um, after we, re, we after we drag these around a little. So that's obviously what it's doing. And then underneath your row definitions and your column definitions, you have all the various things that go inside of your grid. You'll notice that, we, that the grid here is surrounding this entire section. So the grid is basically the entire control is in the grid. And then we have all these different elements inside the grid. We have a text box, which is this, this guy up top. And then we have text blocks for each and every button or key on the keyboard. So, uh, and what defines where these go is you have properties on each of these different elements. You have a property called grid.row and grid.column. So obviously grid.column equals zero means the first column. Grid.row equals one means the second row. Uh, it's zero based, which means it's off by one. Um, the text box here you'll notice is grid.row zero and um, the grid.column is zero too, but it's left out because it's, it defaults to zero for these values. So you don't always have to add that. Another important thing is here on the top, you'll notice we have grid.column span equals 10. Um, and obviously this is turning into a little bit of a tutorial on grids as well, but that's very, very important because grids are used pretty extensively in the big box themes. So knowing how a grid works will really, really help you uh, to be able to modify stuff easily. Um, so here we have uh, grid.column span equals 10, which means it's going to span 10 columns and fill the entire area of the grid horizontally because it's spanning all 10 columns. So this a lot of this is very similar to HTML, but you don't have to know HTML. You can, you can still work with this stuff, and, and the fact that you can do this visually will really help as well. But that's how, so you know how a grid works. What we're, what we're going to do next is we're going to drag an image over onto the grid, uh, and you can and, and just so that, so that you, I can show you how to how to, you guys how to do that, how to add images. Uh, one thing we could do is we could 
just press enter here and type in image and we just added an image control um, but I'm also going to show you how to drag and drop so in the toolbox we have an image option here under common WPF controls and we can drag that image anywhere we want in our text or even on here I like to drag it into the text because it gives you more control as far as where it's going to go but uh, you can you can choose to do it however you want and all it does is just create that image tag that we had already created and I'm going to go ahead and move this up to be on top uh, and there is our new image obviously we haven't done anything with it we haven't set what the what the image path is that it's supposed to show we haven't set this we haven't set the size of it we haven't specified where to put it in the grid or any of that stuff so that's what you would do next in the uh, make sure the image is selected and then in your properties grid you'll notice you have a bunch of options here um, if we go through some of them in layout for example uh, you'll notice we have row and column because we're in a grid so you can specify that there you don't have to type the stuff all out although it's faster to type the stuff all out once you know what you're doing of course uh, but what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna say grid dot row yeah, and it messed up on me because it's not valid markup right now. But I'm going to say grid.row equals 1 and grid.column equals 2. And so you'll notice, oh, that's weird. Why did it do that to me? All right. You'll notice that the image now shows up here. And then I'm also going to say grid.columnspan. span. Oops, if I could type grid.columnspan. span equals five which makes it this entire width here actually let's do six to center it and then grid dot row span equals four which makes it a lot taller to expand this entire box right here so that this we, we have an image placed and it doesn't matter that it overlaps any of the other elements however right now it's going to be underneath all the buttons and the reason for that is because it's first in the list. If we want to make it on top of, all, of everything else, I'm going to move the image. I'm just going to cut it and paste it on the bottom. So on the bottom means on top. Um, in other words, the, the lower you are in, in the markup there, the higher you are on top of everything else. There's also a Z-index property, um, which will, or something like that, what is it? I don't even remember exactly what it's called, but there is a property that you can that you can modify to specify where in the or how uh, whether it's on top or not as well. But here we are. We're started. We have we have an image. We still haven't specified what to go in the image. So let's do that next. Um, what we can do is add image source equals any path on your hard drive. So for example, if I had an image. Uh, in the root of my drive D, I could say D, D, and my keeps messing me up. My resharper here. Anyways, uh, I can say D colon backslash, for example, cat dot PNG. Okay, and it's going to give me an error here because the file doesn't exist um, currently. Uh, but that is an option. But you, when you when you add an image, you're not going to want to put an absolute path in there. Uh, because obviously people not everyone is going to have a D colon backslash cat dot PNG on their machines when you distribute these themes so let's take a look at the folder structure here real quick you'll note in my themes folder I have this custom theme that we're working on right now and I added this cat dash party dot gif file uh, to my uh, my custom theme and it's in my custom folder for my custom theme uh, and so we're going to want to reference this relatively so that no matter where anybody's LaunchBox installation is installed, you can get to it. Now this gets a little bit tricky, um, but it's just it basically you just have to know what to put in there. Uh, so I'm going to copy this over, and we're going to replace the absolute path with this relative path. Now this looks complicated, but when you do this, you're just going to be copying and pasting it ultimately. You have pack colon forward slash forward slash site of origin colon comma 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 stupid complicated why they use that syntax I have no clue I hate it but it works okay so this pack colon slash slash site of origin colon comma 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 that means the launch box folder alright and then inside the launch box folder 
we have themes, custom, and then the GIF file. So you have themes, custom, and then the catparty.gif, and that will refer specifically to that file. No matter where LaunchBox is installed, it will always work when you distribute the theme. As long as you distribute that, ima that image with the theme, because it isn't in the custom theme folder, then it will come with your theme, and you'll always be able to use it. All right? So that is how to get a, an image in the view. All right, uh, that's probably even more complicated than, than you might need because we added all, we did all the grid stuff as well. But now we saved this, and if we load up Big Box, just start up Big Box here. I have I already have Big Box configured to use the custom theme. All right, so here we are loaded up, and I'm going to go into turn this down a little bit. I'm going to go into um, my keyboard, you'll notice I've already tweaked the size of this in the last tutorial, the size of the clear logos there. But I'm going to pull up the keyboard, and uh, you should see we have our little cat there on the keyboard that we added. However, you'll notice he's not moving, and that is because there's something special that you have to do for animated GIFs in order to make the animated GIFs work. So let's go ahead and do that here first, or next. So I'm going to exit Big Box, and we'll go back to our code here. And um, in order to add support for animated GIFs, it's a two-step thing. The first thing you need to do is, a, and you can copy these out of the forums. Uh, this is available in the forums under the tips and tricks thing. Um, I'm basically, that's exactly what I'm doing. I'm just copying this particular portion out of, the, out of the forums. But underneath here, in this user control tag, it doesn't really matter where you put it. Uh, as long as it goes in this user control tag, you're going to paste this line right here. This XMLNS colon GIF equals CLR namespace w WPF animated GIF semicolon assembly equals big box. Now you're going to want to copy and paste that, obviously, or you can type it. Uh, but this is the line you're going to need in order to add GIF support to a particular view. All right. This is what adds the GIF support. Uh, so make sure you put it in the user control tag on top. Uh, and uh, just to give you a brief overview of what this means, it means to add a GIF namespace um, and point it to this programming namespace, ultimately, this C-sharp namespace from the big box assembly is ultimately what that means. Uh, ignore that if, if, you, if it's over your head, but uh, that's what, what gets, gets us up and running with GIF support. And then once you have that, there's one more change you need to make on the image itself. Um, so instead of using source, you're going to change source to be gif colon, that's the namespace, image behavior dot animated source. And that basically makes that, that source animated instead of static. All right? So we'll save that. And then in theory, when we start up Big Box, we should have a dancing cat. So let's go ahead and start up Big Box. Okay, and I'm going to go into Arcade and go into the search, and there is our dancing cat using the relative image in our in our custom theme, um, and there you are for animated GIFs. Uh, so that's about it for this tutorial. Um, just wanted to show you guys how to add an image, drag an image over, and then also how to how to use animated GIFs. Um, I I will put these pieces of text in the description for this video so you can copy paste them from there um, and that's about it thank you guys much i will be doing more of these tutorials uh, here very shortly uh, probably once a week although I, i'm putting these out very very quickly here just to get everybody started uh, i would love to hear in the comments a tutorial uh, uh, comments about what tutorials you guys want next what you're struggling with what i can help out with because i want to i want to get you guys working with these uh, as quickly as possible, and I want I want uh, I want it to be easy for you guys. You know, I, I want I want things to be flexible. Uh, we'll be continuing to work on the custom themes to make things uh, more and more flexible over time. So I'm excited to get you guys working with this stuff. Thank you very much, and I will talk to you everybody soon.